This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. It is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachview, a neighborhood of uh, Pittsburgh, PA, ready to chat with you here on this Wednesday night or whenever you're catching your podcast. Uh, of course, please c- check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, IndieWrestling.us if you want to check out this and other great wrestling podcasts or if you want to check out a lot of the people we talk with uh, here on this show in particular are featured over at IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network. One of the very particular matches we're going to be talking about tonight is definitely over exclusively at IndieWrestling.network. I encourage you guys to check it out if you're not too squeamish, of course. Uh, <laughs> and you can also so drop us a line at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or 412 206 WMS0. Uh, if you have a, if we have somebody coming up here that you have any questions for, if you have suggestions for people we, we should be talking to on the show or even roundtables as well, we've done some a couple of great panels about intergender wrestling, state of Pittsburgh wrestling, um, and, and other su- subject matters as well. If there's anything you'd like or any, any things you'd like us to revisit with people, like we uh, talked about the um, ill fated uh, to catch a predator. Uh, uh, parody segment they did on on PWO television with uh, Joe Dabrowski and uh, Jimmy DeMarco months ago that you guys uh, should definitely check out. A little bit of uh, Cleveland wrestling lore we got into there. Uh, and so please hit us up on those lines for either way you want to. Or, of course, US Indie Wrestling on Twitter or Mayhem Show on Twitter as well. So let's get into it. Our guest is returning. It's been a Probably about a year since we had him on the show. So uh, back with us, and he's got a shiny new belt he's showing off here this week. Thomas <laughs> Mathis, the absolute. What's ab- up, everybody? Do I have to do I have to like do I have to put an extra emphasis on absolute on that? It's, I know it does on your Twitter. It's absolutely. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well thank, thank you so much for joining us and of course before the show we were doing a little bit extra for the stream and for patreon you're were, you were telling giving us some nutrition tips <laughs> so uh if you guys want to go check that out uh patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show uh and, and we'll have some clips up there uh, later in the week so how you doing man it's been about a year yeah it's been a year I'm doing great i'm having tons of fun mm-hmm. um i'm learning a lot and i'm, I'm really happy with where I'm at and the progress that I've made uh, in the last year. Excellent. Yeah, uh, I feel like I've come a really long way uh, from where I was a year ago, and um, I'm feeling really proud and really pumped up, and uh, I'm excited for what the future might hold, and Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep putting my best efforts into it and having fun and and getting better. Well, we continue to see you. Of course, I, I've seen you um, a, across other promotions that we've worked with over the last several years with RWA and Fight Society, of course. Uh, the But the biggest thing I, I definitely want to talk about off the top here is a match that you had in this past year that was a lot of a lot of fun. Okay, it was a lot of fun for us to watch. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how much fun it was for you. Uh, but uh, there was, a, a, in particular, there was a pretty monumental match that I feel like I, I, I'm hearing fans mention to me um in your status with the company afterwards ever since this match that happened in i think it was august at black diamonds heat wave i believe it was yeah you had a last man standing match with beast man <laughs> that was i won't even dare to show clips on this show because we are an explicit tag but there was a lot of blood like a lot of blood uh and, and it wasn't yours <laughs> it's a little bit of you should see the, the other guy afterwards right yeah that was a brutal match um for sure uh, that was a big experience, like uh, m- had a big impact on me. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I haven't been in a last man standing match before that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I have been in some other brutal matches like the Gambino street fight at RWA. Um, uh, yes, the mustard in the tights. I think we talked about that the last time you were on. Yeah, that <laughs> one, that match was not even close to being as brutal as the last man standing Mm -hmm. uh last man standing that i mean i know that i'm uh still a young worker Mm -hmm. but that match that really beat the crap out of me Mm -hmm. yeah i felt that match um 
and the the injury that led to that match mm -hmm. uh, where I ate the post uh, pretty good that uh, kind of fatigued me down as well because I was dealing with a concussion mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. that that was the the battle so it was interesting because this this was a match that that came out of what was kind of just kind of a it seemed like a freak incident of sorts in a match uh, several months prior. Mm -hmm. I think you were in a multi-man match with Beast Man, and you happened to catch the post and get a concussion out of. Uh, yeah, that that post rocked me. Um, I that concussion was that was that was annoying. That concussion. Uh, mm -hmm. Was that your first? No, I've had concussions before, but that one that one messed with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a challenge to get over. I felt so fatigued. Uh, I felt like my like just energy was just cut in half, mm -hmm. and I couldn't train with as much intensity. Uh, and my, uh, I think it showed in my physique. And like 2019 in general has been like a really crazy experience as far as maintaining my physique and mm -hmm. and like while I'm, I'm out there wrestling and stuff because the wrestling really beats the crap out of your body. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to, to continue building my physique. And like when I take, uh, like when I go through concussions and stuff, um, that it makes it tough to continue moving forward physically. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause you gotta take a step back to a certain point, right? Like you, you can't go full tilt with the rest of what you want to do to maintain your body. Right. Right. Well, not only maintain, I'm trying to continue building up mm -hmm. my body. That mm -hmm. way I can look good from all angles. And that's the goal. Uh, like every photo, just like uh, the aesthetics, I want them to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll get there, uh, definitely. But the injuries, they've, they're, they're tough, but they always make me tougher. Mm hmm. Yeah, getting past them. And I went through something worse after the last man standing match. Uh, I injured my long thoracic nerve. Um, Which is the first time I've heard of this nerve, by the way. Yeah, that was not fun. Um, and that happened from like wear and tear. Uh, when I became a wrestler, I was actually dealing with, um, I'll never know exactly what I did to my rotator cuff, but it was shot and I was afraid that, you know, if I never use my body, uh, what was the point of ever having it? So I became a, a professional wrestler. Um, and, uh, the bumping over time on the, on the rotator cuff, it, uh, I think it caused me to injure my long thoracic nerve, but this is all just kind of like speculation. Mm -hmm. I'll never know for sure. Uh, even if I went to a doctor, he wouldn't be able to tell me for sure. That is a difficult thing. I I know some people that have been in car accidents and and it's been nerve damage to the point where you know getting uh, uh, benefits for having been injured when somebody hits you and you have nerve damage is is hard to prove, right? Yeah. And treat and figure out and diagnose and deal with, even though like you have this like no, I can't hold something. Something's wrong, but no nobody can agree with you, right? Yeah, the the nerve damage uh, was scary um, because of the pain. Um, I didn't really know what was going on, uh, and I was having shooting pain mm -hmm. down my arm, mm -hmm. uh, my whole shoulder blade. Uh, it was really, and it was constant, and I'm talking like uh, screaming pain, mm -hmm. really bad pain. Um, and it caused me to uh, lose uh, control of my uh, my scap, which is my shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't wasn't uh, functioning right, and because of that, I uh, couldn't get my right pec to fire, and I ended up my right pec literally atrophied. It just wasn't being used, no matter what. Like it wasn't. Kicking yeah. in, right? I couldn't get any blood into the area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, my pec atrophied. And I'm like, well, you know what? I got one pec. <laughs> I got to keep going. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
all I can do is fight against it and, and fix it. It was, was a really complicated issue to fix. Mm. Uh, it caused my scap to wing. Mm-hmm. Um, I've learned so much about the shoulder blades uh, since then and all the muscles that are connected to it and stuff. It's really fascinating to me. But, uh, yeah, it caused my scap to wing, and it was just a really complicated issue to fix. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm past it, and... Um, I think I'm like brand new again as far like physically my framework, the rotator cuff that started it all, the concussion, I'm not injured. I'm like feeling 100% healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I think my, in the next year, my physique will really start to blossom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Like the chest, the lats. Um, and then I'll start bringing my arms up. So it's like you work from the torso out. Mm-hmm. But that's just how I do it. So. And it seems, and that seems normal. Like, like some people get into wrestling and they're not really uh, even know how to start with their body, right? And, and you see them, they're kind of just a person getting into wrestling, know how to do the stuff, and then as they go, I mean, look at like kind of uh, uh, Elias, for instance. Looking at Logan Shulo when he started versus Elias now is like two different people practically. Yeah, Elias is jacked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was he was in decent shape when he was around here. So it's <laughs> just like holy crap. But I guess that's what happens when you have world class trainers at your disposable uh, disposal for that. So you can always watch Jeff Cavalier on uh, Athlinex. Man, I really can't. He's so helpful to mm-hmm. um, like. Mil- obviously millions of people i'm he probably has millions of people i'm i'm not sure but i know for a fact that he is one of the reasons why i was able to beat this mm-hmm. injury to my rotator cuff and the long thoracic nerve and and he i'm so grateful that people like him are out there mm-hmm. who are mm-hmm. just willing to give us uh his knowledge to, mm-hmm. and help just completely free out of the goodness of his heart it's mm-hmm. it's awesome and he's always working with WWE guys too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, look, look at all those guys. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I always see like before, after somebody just dropped the uh, uh, Tommaso Ciampa like like uh, uh, ten years ago to now, and it's just that like, night and day. Yeah. Um. So uh, I mentioned this. Uh, you, you had a couple scary moments in this uh, last man standing that I was there in person to watch and film. Um, including, uh, it looked like you, you took a pretty bad bump on a table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, God. I remember that. <laughs> uh, you, uh, 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 a beast man was bleeding all over the place. Um, I, I can't imagine you've been in a match with more blood involved. No, not even close. Uh, my, those red trunks I have are that they're, they're red cause of Fetty's blood. <laughs> I'll always, uh, those trunks will be special to me because, uh, Fetty's blood is on them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it means a lot uh to me um I puked in that match too yes you did I remember <laughs> I uh I tried not to film it uh I made a gif of it because <laughs> I thought it would look at the brutality in this match hey to be fair I do re- you're the, and I think this is the second time I I've, I've filmed somebody puking in a match <laughs> because the first time now high praise was uh the now walking wild uh, taking on Chavo Guerrero in probably 2010, 2011. Yeah. And uh, Chavo worked him over so, so much that, and I don't know what his name was, she, Sean, F- or, uh, 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 Shima Zion probably at the time. Um, but uh, yeah, he worked him over so much, he just like puked in the middle of the ring. I, re- I remember you telling us this story. I'm not sure where, but I've heard the story before. <laughs> it's my go-to puke story. Now you're you're my second go-to puke story. <laughs> so. That's an honor. <laughs> um, anyway, so other than that, you've of course been doing a lot of stuff and in, in getting a falling over a black diamond in West Virginia. Uh, and that's uh, in Benwood, just south of Wheeling, for anybody, any geography nuts out there. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but you've been going a lot of different places. Um, you've been uh, branching out. Of course, you're Pittsburgh-based. But uh, you've been hitting a lot of things outside of Pittsburgh. That's right. Yeah, I uh, I really like to explore. Mm-hmm. I like to go on l- long road trips. Um, and I like to engage with new crowds in new areas. Uh, just for like the sake of learning and um i found a lot of success at eastern panhandle pro wrestling okay yeah uh it's close to maryland okay um having a blast there 
Uh, I'm the cruiserweight champion there. Uh, I'm very proud. Um, there are a lot of good people that I've met there, um, and they've opened up some new doors to me uh, in Allentown. So we'll see if I can uh, connect the dots with that uh, opportunity that's coming. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that'll be a fourth show. Um, and then we got some other uh, opportunities on the horizon uh, in Detroit, uh, hoping to become a mainstay uh, at a show in, in Detroit. I, I do have to share this story because I, I, in my travels, we were talking about before the show, when I'm traveling with my work uh, in, in the spring, I get to go check out a lot of other promotions. Uh -huh. And one of them was this international big time wrestling. I knew Beastman was going to be there. So I'm like, okay, I know friends of the show are going to be there. Let's, let's see what's up. And then I notice because I don't think you've been on since we, we, we this happened. Uh, I noticed a very familiar looking referee. <laughs> yeah it was me i was like a, a very in shape referee uh so uh, that, that was that was kind of and and you you stuck out as a referee i mean not for the bad <laughs> reasons i think um but uh but but uh, tell me a little bit about that experience have you refereed much or was that kind of a thing that was thrown at you so i was a referee at mega pro when i first showed up there. oh okay okay but that was only because i forgot my gear oh yeah <laughs> Won't make that mistake again. Um, but then, yeah, I uh, got an opportunity to uh, get in front of the crowd at International Big Time Wrestling, and that mm -hmm. show was so awesome. So awesome. I had so much fun back there. I met Congo Kong, mm -hmm. who I, he's a friend of mine. Uh, he critiques my matches. He gives me all kinds of helpful advice. Uh, there's a guy at International Big Time Wrestling named Soul Taker. He, he's gone by other names that I think Greg Ryan talked to him about on his podcast. Dude, I loved him. He was so cool. I was freezing uh, in the locker room, right? Because they had like this big opening and mm -hmm. it was like, it was chilly and I was like freezing. And Soul Taker, he came up to me. He's like, yo, hold up. <laughs> just do this. And he was like, like Goldust style. Yeah. He's like, just chill. And I'll never forget that. And ever since then, every time I'm cold, I think about Soul Taker. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm able to collect myself with his, his breathing technique. But I had a blast in the ring as a referee. Uh, you know, I learned uh, about some stuff, too, as far as, like, referee selling goes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, it was really fun. And um, I'm going to be up there with Fetty. Uh, to uh to have a match and i'm really hoping that i can earn uh, a roster spot because that shit was awesome that Good. crowd was awesome uh i really liked the presentation of it all and stuff mm -hmm. and it's a very um because i know i know the rude boy who's known for uh you know the insane clown posse juggalo championship wrestling stuff is is involved in that which i didn't realize how much of a juggalo ish show that was going to be it's not full on if you're not like it's not like the, the the jcw shows where if you're not down with everything you don't get it mm -hmm. um like it's a general wrestling show just with a little bit like there was a hatchet man in the audience or something as that kind of led to a little bit of a different audience uh, that you get to deal with what was that? It, it has, has been at a, uh, a, a kind of a juggalo uh, uh, adjacent uh, promotion like that kind of led to some interesting uh, 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 fan interactions up there. Um, well, not too much because I was I was just a referee. Mm -hmm. But um, if I can get on there and, and, and stay there, I, I would be really interested to see how how the fans um, uh, warm up to me over time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh yeah, I'm sure they were feisty and stuff, and they were they were into <laughs> it. So uh, that's it's always exciting when you have good fans who are invested in, in what we're doing in there. So, like I say, you you it's been it's been about a year since we talked, and uh, and uh, you've been to several promotions. Um, what, what's the biggest thing? What's your biggest takeaway, other than the injuries? Uh, you know, putting that aside mm. uh, of your experiences, what's your biggest takeaway or something you may have learned from somebody other than your. Uh, 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 warming up techniques from Soul Taker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your biggest takeaway from the year? Well, I uh, attended a seminar at EPPW. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Mike Canellis, um, and he came in and he uh, he really opened my eyes about how hard um, the top level guys 
are all working. Mm-hmm. And he mentioned like Randy Orton. Uh, he mentioned, I believe, John Cena. Um, he mentioned Vince McMahon and how Vince McMahon gets up at like the crack of dawn to go work out every single day. And he's like 60 years old. Or something I like think it's 70, 70 by now, right? Yeah. yeah. It was it's incredible. Um and he, he was telling us about if you think you're working hard enough, work harder. Mm-hmm. Uh there's what well, there's always somebody working harder than you, right? Yeah. So hard work um was you know, that he really opened my eyes to that and I've I've since I try to step it up continuously, uh always raising the bar on myself. Um and uh progressing uh and growing that's what i want um and he uh mike canellis he gave us a lot of of assurance and he told us that you know he was like us at one point where he was you know on the road attending these uh events and getting experience and stuff and uh he talked about his demons and the thing and his adversity mm-hmm. and he assured us that if he could do it, uh, we could do it too. And to have faith and that, you know, uh, a call will eventually come, uh, as so long as you're willing to put in the hard work. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, it's been good to see you, uh, again, grow in these last several years. I know you're three years in the business. You're still a pup. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, more like two and a half years. Two and a half It'll be three years in August. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, any, any big goals for the new year coming up? Yeah, uh, I want to become a mainstay at at least two more shows. Okay. Yeah, so I'll be, like I'm confirmed through the year at Imagine Wrestling and EPPW. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's Black Diamond. If I could get two more, uh, that would be that would be great. Um, if I could, uh, really develop my, uh, my chest and my lats, which will, um, taper down my waist more Mm -hmm. and make me look crazier. Like it'll just make me look like I have this super tapered down waist and big wide lats Mm -hmm. with like a big, big glutes and quads. So I'll just look, hopefully really uh like ridiculous so that's another goal uh maybe that might take two years <laughs> that might be a two-year one. muscles hard that's to build good. anyway we talked about it. i mean this has been a long time with you uh, uh the fitness and the and and working on the body has been like a lifelong thing for you basically right so yeah it's, it's been eight it's, years. It's, it's not just to be looking good wrestling it's you know um uh well Things have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, wrestling is the most important thing mm-hmm. uh, to me. My body is just my toolkit. Okay. And that it, that's why um, I, I work harder now on my body than I ever did before I was a wrestler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean... Uh, my, yep. it, my body's now just, it's not fun building my body. It's, it's a project. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, um, it's now my toolkit. Yeah. Uh, I need this thing mm-hmm. so, so I can, I can do what I love. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I know we had a conversation <laughs> about social media. I understand you did get some stuff r- ran to back up again, right? Uh, what was that? Social media. Yeah. I got Twitter back up. <laughs> we had a discussion about this at one of the shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I I'm from a background uh where I I was not very like up with social media. Mm-hmm. I and when I getting into the business I had to learn a lot uh about like social media and I had some friends who were willing to like kind of help me along um like Kayla Thompson mm-hmm. helped me along uh especially with Twitter. Um uh, but yeah, that was a big, <laughs> it was high, a bit steep learning curve, <laughs> but I think I got it together, um, a little bit at least and get started. The seeds are planted. Good, good. And, uh, where can people find you online? So you can find me on Twitter at Tommy Absolute. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Absolute Thomas Mathis, I believe. I think it's Thomas Mathis 
Absolute. Uh, okay. Yeah, Thomas Mathis Flips. Absolute. So Thomas Mathis. Happened that one up. Yeah, uh, Thomas Mathis Absolute on Instagram and Facebook is the same, I believe. There you Thomas go. Mathis Ab- Absolute. Go check it out. And, uh, of course, you'll find out dates where uh, uh, Mathis will be popping up all over the place, it sounds like. And <laughs> defending that uh, Cruiserweight Championship he's holding over there on the couch. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Hey, good to be catching up with you, too, and seeing how you're going. And, and we'll be having some more catch-ups we have scheduled here in the coming months as well. Uh, so check out everything. Don't miss an episode. Please subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on your podcast provider. Or, of course, follow IndieWrestling.us on all the social medias and YouTubes uh, so you can get all the interviews and all the past interviews. I mean, we talked with a lot of people over the years. Uh, we basically have a yearly check-in with uh, Shane Taylor over at Ring of Honor, it seems. Uh, early uh, early discussions with uh, Britt Baker after she uh, first broke into the business. So please go check out all of those uh, between WrestlingMayhemShow.com, IndieWrestling.us. A lot of great stuff going on over there. And, of course, you can check uh, our guest tonight uh, in action at IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network, uh, especially in the Black Diamond and the RWA shows. So thank you so much to uh, uh, Thomas for joining us. Thank you, you guys in the chat room joining us live on Facebook and all the other platforms. Until next time, please support Indie Wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.